So today we're going to talk about the new Move Shoot Move Nomad Star Tracker. My favorite. It improves on the original Move Shoot Move in some fundamental ways, and I'm going to show you how to set it up and use it with both the laser and the polar scope to get more accurate, more rock solid star tracking Milky Way work. Hey everyone, welcome to this week's video and welcome to Mount St. Helens National Volcanic Monument. This is a spectacular place to do night sky photography, especially on a big high pressure July day like this. It's warm. We're going to have Milky Way from about 11.30 p.m. to 2.30 a.m. And I'm going to show you how I use no Move Shoot Move's brand new Nomad Star Tracker and why it's my favorite way to capture really clear, crisp Milky Way photographs. Um, you know, anytime that you're working with a pan and tilt tripod, which are, are my favorite kind of tripod heads, I like my fluid head system the best. That's what I carry whenever I possibly can. It's just perfect for doing gimbal-like work with wildlife or sports action, as well as setting up and doing really precise movements with landscape photography. But we'll break it down here in a second and convert it to be the perfect base for the Move Shoot Move Star Tracker. And honestly, the Acrotech Panoram head that I put on my custom built ultralight tripods also works just as well. And if you're interested in links to any of this gear, the gear I use, stand by and recommend, you can always run over to hudsonhenry.com slash ATS links and look at the night photography and lighting section. You can also click right here and that'll take you right there. So. We'll break down this fluid head system from my standard kind of photographic setup uh, and convert it into the Move Shoot Move Star Tracker system. You know, the, the first thing I would do and what I will do tonight as it gets a little dimmer and harder to film is I'll set up and do a blue hour shot as the last little afterglow from the sun around the, the, the corner of the earth after sunset is fading from the landscape and there's just a faint glow. And I'll photograph the mountain with just that really faint light, but no directional light at all, that blue hour light, long exposure. I'm not worried about the stars that are coming out blurring. Then I'm gonna capture the stars on a tracker with the camera moving and the mountain blurred, and we'll just put those together in post. I've got a whole course about how to do that. If you're curious, you can click right here or just run over to hudsonhenry.com slash Milky Way. And again, I'm putting those links along with everything else I'm talking about in this video's full description. Just click the title or show more. So let's jump in and break this whole fluid head system down and get it ready for the move, shoot, move. All right, so let's say you've been out photographing. Maybe you were capturing some panoramas, even some multi-row. You know, I generally work with my fluid head or my panorama head with my Acrotech nodal rail sitting right on top of it. But once I'm getting ready to do Milky Way photography and I'm going to set up the move, shoot, move, I'm going to take that nodal rail off. And that nodal rail sits in here, you know, if I was working with a long lens, I can drop my long lens foot in oriented the same way that the nodal rail would. So I never really need to move the, the clamp on my tripod. But whether I'm using the ultimate head or the, the sorry, whether I'm using the panorama head from Acrotech or whether I'm using the, my fluid head system, this is when I'm actually going to flip it. All right. And I'm going to change it just for the move sheet move work. And I'm actually going to put it's sort of the reverse. I'm putting the clamp knob forward here so that it doesn't interfere with the pan knob when I tilt dramatically for Milky Way work. If you think about it, when I tilt like that, I need extra space to be able to reach in and turn that pan knob easily with my hand. So I'm setting it up so that it's crosswise to the head, perpendicular, angling the head a little bit, but before I do that, I want to make sure that two things, that I'm set up really stable and that I'm set up really level. So for stability, I'm actually going to take a, a sandbag. You could take stones, you could hang your, your tripod bag. You know, if it's really windy, sometimes the tripod bag can actually start creating shake with it moving around between the tripod legs. Stones are better in that case. But I've got this sandbag and there's a hook on the rock bags that I like to use and, and sell the Desmond rock bags. It's hanging right here off my tall fluid head. So I'm setting that in there. I'm setting up low. You know, I would have to crouch to use the head in this position. But remember, our system's going to build up. So I want to put it where it's right at eye level. And then I want to make sure that I'm level. And I'm looking at the bubble level in the center of the fluid head. It's that head and that, that pan rotation that the head's rotating on that makes the most difference. So I'm looking at the bubble level right here in the center of my head 
where it pans. I want that locked in nice and level. That's what matters, all right? So then I'm ready to actually mount the move, shoot, move in the head, all right? We're lock, so, rock solid, we're level, we're ready to go. I'll put the, the um, Allen wrench back in the clamp and I'm gonna go ahead and grab my move, shoot, move Nomad and I'm gonna pull it out of its little case and drop it in here oriented with the, the turntable. Think of it like a vinyl turntable angled sort of up towards the sky. And this little red piece, if you haven't threaded this little red piece in, it might be mounted to the laser when you get your kit. It's just a little red, small threaded male thread, wide threaded female thread, knurled knob, and it spins right into the corner on the bottom of the move, shoot, move right there. Okay, so once I've done that, then I wanna go ahead, actually, <laughs> I forgot. I actually wanna take it back out. And I have my polar scope. When you buy the system, you know, the old move, shoot, move, I was not a fan of the polar scope. The new one, I like the kit that has the laser and the polar scope because you can use one to set up the other. And you're gonna put the little bracket that mounts the polar scope in you know, set up that little hole and thread that red knob right in there to clamp that in place, okay? There it is, boom. And then you're gonna turn it so that it's relatively level. There's a little level on it. You wanna kinda center the bubble level, all right? And then we're going to be able to take the laser from the kit Make sure your battery's charged. And it's got a little knurled ring that threads on the outside of it. You're gonna spin that off and you're gonna thread that laser into that red ring that just held the mounting assembly for the polar scope. The polar scope is held in place by this little nylon screw that won't damage it. You slip it in there and the wide end is the end that you're gonna be looking through. It has caps on it to protect it. It's good to leave those on until you're actually using them. And as I said, you're just gonna rotate it till the little bubble level that's built into it is basically centered, all right? Then the next thing you're gonna do, uh, you're gonna put that cap carefully back in the case so that you don't lose it. But the next thing you're gonna do is take your Acrotec Ultimate Head. You could use any ball head, I guess, but the Ultimate Head is shaped so uniquely, it's almost as if it were made for Star Tracker work. And, and you've mounted, this. the Move Shoot Move comes with this really nice base unit that you can thread on and then there's a set screw that threads into the base of your head. So you just thread that piece on. I use a screwdriver to cinch it nice and tight. And then you put the little set screw into the base of your tripod's head. So there's no way for it to possibly rotate and you thread it on. And this is one of the massive improvements from this head over the original Move Shoot Move Star Tracker. That thread's on there, it's locked and geared, and it will not rotate. The old Move Shoot Move had kind of a clutch, and sometimes if you had too much weight, it would pop. This one is just rock solid. And because of the shape of your Move sh of the Ultimate Head, you can see how it's basically level once you're set up and, and angled for taking, taking your, your polar alignment. So when the night comes and I see the North Star, Polaris, all I'm gonna do is use the pan mechanism. Make sure I'm still level here. I'm gonna use the pan mechanism. I'm gonna turn on this really, really bright laser and it's like a green laser beam, like a, like a lightsaber that shoots up into the sky. And I'm gonna come down so that I'm on a line with it and look at where it's hitting the stars. And I'm gonna get to where, I'll put this down so it's out of my way. I'm gonna look at where it's hitting the stars and when it gets level with Polaris, the North Star, I'll stop and lock my pan and then I'll just tilt until it's right on Polaris and then lock both those adjustments and you don't move your base head at all. Now, everything that you do is with this and if you turn on the switch on this side, there's a switch to N for the Northern Hemisphere. There's a switch to S if you're aligning on the Southern Cross in the Southern Hemisphere and it will just start it rotating in the right direction to counteract the Earth's rotation. Now, once you've set up and you've got the laser on Polaris, you're close, but you may not be perfect. 
that's where it comes in. You can thread the laser back out so that it's not in your way. You're gonna pull the caps off the polar scope and you're gonna put on your headlamp on red mode and you're gonna angle your headlamp down. Your headlamp shines in this little window just below the level on the polar scope and illuminates the reticle on the polar scope. So with your headlamp, your red headlamp angled down into this, suddenly you'll see in the dark of night a little red target assembly and the brightest star in that field will be Polaris because you've lined it up with the laser and gotten it in range. So then all you need to do is make micro adjustments with your head just to get perfectly lined up on Polaris with the polar alignment. If you want to get even more fancy with it, you can download an app for your phone and at your given latitude and longitude, it will show you exactly where on that illuminated reticle that you should place Polaris. But putting it centered up is gonna be good enough for wide angle landscape work like we're talking about. If you're doing deep space stuff, you may wanna get just perfect. You'll download that app, the Polar Alignment app. There's a number of them out there if you search. But now you're ready to just mount your camera. And in this case, maybe I'd be using the Z62 with the Viltrox 16 millimeter. I can just set up like this, get it locked into place. I love the flip screen for this kind of work because I can just tilt out and have a nice clear view right here. And when it's, I'm aligned on Polaris, I can turn and get set up exactly how I want above Mount St. Helens, like that. Boom. And when I activate the switch to north, it'll start to rotate. What I like to do is get my, my level, the level view, the little azimuth with the, and the green line set up perfectly level while I'm looking at the back LCD. You know, I'll make sure I'm focused. I often actually come off the tripod to focus and I'll, you know, I'll just use pinpoint AFS with the Nikon system and it will lock a bright star or planet. Um, you can also, if you're a Nikon shooter, turn off the save focus position and just flipping the camera off and on with the Z lens will actually focus precisely on infinity. Uh, it's worth testing out. You want to make sure you zoom in and check your resultant images, but you get locked in here. Um, you get to where you can be looking at your scene and you get your perfectly level using the ball head. You know, once you've done your polar alignment, you don't want to make any movements of the underlying head. It's all going to be with the ball head. You get perfectly level, then you can activate your tracker, take a test shot at high ISO with noise reduction turned off. Just turn it up to 6400 or 12,800 ISO and take a quick test shot just to see if your composition's right, just to see if your focus looks right. And if you've got it looking the way that you want, turn off the tracker, get it back to, you just, all you have to do is turn the pan of your ultimate, of your Acrotech ultimate head or whichever ball head you're using back to where it's level again and you'll be in the same composition that you started with before because all that's happening is it's rotating under the pan. And then you can turn on your long exposure noise reduction, lower your camera's ISO to its primo night mode for the Z6 III and the ZF, that's 800 ISO. For Nikon shooters that are shooting with a Z8 or a Z9, it's 500 ISO. For the old Z7, it's 400 ISO. Whatever camera you have, if you check out my Milky Way course that I linked earlier in this, hudsonhenry.com slash Milky Way, uh, there's a video in that that describes exactly how to figure out what your ultimate Milky Way ISO is, and you would be using that. Then turn on long exposure noise reduction, use exposure delay mode or a cable release, trigger the camera, you know, turn on the NORT, turn it on so that it's tracking, and then trigger the camera with long exposure noise reduction. It's going to take twice as long as your exposure setting. But this system is so rock solid and the ability to use the laser to get in tight to Polaris and then fine tune it with the scope is really, really nice. You know, if there's any nitpick that I have with the new Nomad Tracker by Move Shoot Move, it's that the north and the south symbols are kind of small. So make sure you get your reading glasses out in a bright light, look at that, know which way it is. Um, and also, Sometimes you have to be careful. It's hard to, to fire the laser or look through the polar alignment scope with the camera on the head. So sometimes you have to pull it in order to just check your alignment. I wish maybe it came out a little further, but it probably keeps it, it probably keeps it a bit more accurate doing it this way. So I understand why they would do it. All these little things are, you know, it's never going to be perfect. This one is so much closer to perfect than the original. And I loved the original too. So 
you have questions about setting this up, let me know. Hit me in the comments. Hit me in email. I'm easy to get a hold of. I'm having a blast with this thing. I think anybody that has it will be too. There's nothing wrong with the original Move Sheet Move. If you have and love the original, it's a great tracker. I just really like the ability to fine tune the laser alignment with the polar scope and have it be so accurate. And I think that not having that little clutch that slips like the original Move Sheet Move and the complicated set of controls is nice. This one's USB-C charges like quickly and is just simple north or south. It's made for star tracking and nothing else. So I really, really like it. I think it's a great product. When you get it, you can run over to my links. There's a link in this video's description. There's a 10% off code. If you, use the, if you use the code Hudson, just all caps Hudson, you'll get 10% off. Um, I think it's worth it. Make sure you get the kit with the laser pointer and the polar scope. All right, everybody. So that's it. I can't wait to get photographing tonight. So I hope everybody out there is staying safe, staying creative, and we'll see you next week.